Hi guys and today I've got for you the MG ZS EV. Now I first reviewed the ZS about three years ago on my previous channel Motoring Middle East. I'll put the link for that up here. This is essentially the same car except that it isn't because this is an electric vehicle. That's what the EV stands for. So this is an electric vehicle from MG. It's also possibly the cheapest family sized or SUV sized electric vehicle that you can get on the UK market at the moment. They start from around £25,000. There's two trim levels. This is the range topper, the exclusive. This is just under £29,000. I should just add that the regular MG ZS starts from around £15,000 and tops out at around £20,000. The only real difference you can see externally between this and the regular MG ZS are the windmill style diamond cut 17 inch alloy wheels, which I think actually are a very good size rim for this size of car. And of course, no exhaust pipe plus a secret compartment here what does that do that's for the connector for the electric charger that's what that does now I should also add that the MG ZS the regular car has also had a bit of a facelift for this year the EV version will probably get that same makeover for next year for 2022 and I've also heard rumors that it's going to end up with a bigger battery which is almost going to double its range which is a very good thing so what's the actual spec of the car? It's got a 44.5 kilowatt per hour lithium ion battery, powers an electric motor, puts out an equivalent of 143 brake horsepower, 260 pounds foot of torque. Not bad in a car like that. That gives you a zero to 62 miles per hour acceleration in 8.5 seconds, but a top speed of 87 miles per hour. Well, how much more do you really need? And um, uh, MG claims that it will do 163 miles on a full charge. I actually did see that range come up when I got it up to 90% charge and talking of charging uh, on a fast 50 kilowatt charger you should be able to get 80% charge in about 40 minutes I can vouch for that I think I saw pretty much around that and um on a home fast charger, a 7 kilowatt charger, it should take uh, six and a half hours. Uh, and if you plug it into a wall socket, it'll take 14 hours. Uh, MG also claimed that it will do 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. I saw 3.6, so it's not bad. So in this video, I'll do a review of the car. I'll look at the practicality and we'll take it for a drive. Now, I have actually taken it for a long drive. I did a 220 mile round trip, a work trip recently in this EV. That wasn't really a review of the car. That was more about reviewing what it's like to do a longer trip in an EV. What's it like when it comes to range anxiety and charging it up and all the rest of it. You should find that really interesting. The link for that is up here and I'll put that in the description below as well. And talking of that, make sure that you're subscribing to this channel. It is, of course, youtube.com forward slash brown car guy. Subscribe also to browncarguy.com and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and even TikTok. Just search for my hashtag. It is hashtag browncarguy. And you know what? If you enjoy my videos, you can also sponsor them and you can do that from as little as £2 or $2 a month. Just head over to patreon.com forward slash browncarguy. Cool. Let's get into this. So normally electric car you find that the boot space has been compromised. Not in this case because that's gargantuan. 448 litres of room. Under this floor you have a space saver spare wheel and you could probably put a few things either side of that. There's a couple of pockets on each side and this floor actually you can put it on two levels so you actually put it on that higher level as well. Of course there are cables and stuff on here so ideally what you want to do is put it on the higher level and hide the cables underneath it. So that's actually quite practical. Also, don't forget 60-40 split folding rear seats. What are the rear seats like to sit in? Let's find out next. Let's just get back into this car now. One of the things that it benefits from is this uh, quite large panoramic uh, sunroof, which does have a blind, but I put the blind back to get more light in. So this rear is actually very spacious and very airy. I can move the uh, headrest up there. Now this driver's seat is set for me. This is my driving position. I'm six foot two with long legs. So considering that, 
this is really good. I've actually got a lot of space back here because I have room to spare for my knees. That's no problem at all. Headroom's pretty good. No issues with encroaching uh, from the side. Uh, shins, no issue. And even wiggle room for my feet as well. No problem at all. Um, good space like this. Over here we have a little pocket. There's one USB here. There is no center armrest, but there are Isofix Chelsea anchor points, which of course are all important in a car like that. Being a range topper, this has leather-ish seat covers and upholstery as well. It's okay, it's not too bad. To be honest, it's a fairly comfortable place to travel back here, but what's it like in the front? Let's find out. Here we are inside the MG ZS. This is, of course, very well equipped. It's the top of the range car. There's even a little compartment down here. Look at this, a little place to put things. And of course, the USBs and a power supply are down there as well. I like this bit of trim here. You know, one of the things people say, oh, it's got cheap trim and stuff like that, but it's very nicely designed. I mean, look at the way it's been done. Um, Instant panel's pretty good with the pods on the side. You know, it's a bit upmarket. It's obviously taken inspiration from other makes and models, shall we say, but it's not too bad. Starter button. So again, there won't be any engine noise, but we'll do that. You see the MG logo comes up on there. Obviously the stereo is on and you can see it's ready. It's ready to go. That's what it tells you right there. This, of course, is the stuff that we've seen before on MG's. Um, what size screen is this? This is a 8 inch color touch screen. Relatively easy, really intuitive to use, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the rest of it. Big glitchy, it's failed on me a couple of times, it comes back after a while, but uh, otherwise easy to use. If I press OK, then I can go through that. Now on here, um, uh, I want to show you these things because this is very important. And now at the bottom, on the bottom left, you can see the range of the car, 67 miles. And on the right is the mileage of the car. Now. If I do that, I can show you the trip meter and the trip meters is telling you, you know, what you've done. So I've done 3.4 uh, miles per kilowatt hour, as I've said, uh, over the time that I've driven it. I've done 236 uh, miles in the car. I have charged it a few times, shall we say. Um, but that is, uh, that is the actual main screen. Now on this screen, you can see at the bottom, uh, the P and the 3 and the N. P obviously is the gear. Uh, you have the modes down here. Now let me show you this. This is quite cool because it says curves, a sort of reference to Formula One there, and battery and mode. Um, so when you press the battery, uh, it shows you, you know, uh, how far you've got to go. Now the, when I press the curves, that's a regen level. That's a regen. So it's got three levels of regen. So the higher the level, the more regen it recoups. It recoups that from when you're slowing down and braking. It doesn't quite do the one pedal thing, so it won't come to a complete halt unless you've got loads of space to roll, um, but it does a pretty good approximation of that. So you can sometimes drive it around for a fair bit on the one throttle. Now the, the, num uh, the, the other thing to show you is the mode, which is down here, and that's normal mode, and then that's sports mode, um, and then below that is eco mode. This car, like I said, is very well equipped. So in addition to the touchscreen and the AC, it's not actually climate control. Um, it's more uh, because you don't set the temperature and leave it, but it's, got, uh, it's not too bad. Um, it does have, uh, here we go, heated seats on here. It's got all the controls on the steering wheel as well and the cruise control down there, which is adaptive cruise control. It's all pretty good. Let me run you through. Like I said, this is quite nice. I do like the way that they've done that. Uh, decent sized glove box, not too bad. Pockets down there, and you've got a bit of leather like trim there. And you know, I mean, it's it's hard, but it's not, you know, it's not too bad. That's soft ish, so it's not too bad. And again, let me just read through it's very well equipped for the money. I mean, uh, MG Pilot, all the equipment has got active emergency braking with pedestrian and bicycle detection, traffic jam assist, intelligent speed limit assist, blind spot detection, lane keep uh, assist, intelligent high beam assist, rear traffic, cross traffic alert, keyless entry, push button start. Uh, only a four speaker. Uh, sound system though that's a little bit disappointing and it doesn't sound great it's okay it's all right bluetooth and all the rest of it sat nav is there uh leather steering wheel this is quite nice the, the knurled surround on the knob this I, th I think that's unique to the ev um uh what else we got automatic headlights rear parking camera rear camera so if i put that into reverse now you should be able to see that there is indeed a reversing camera you just push down to put it back into park um silver roof rails uh, heated door mirrors um which fold in 
electric driver's six-way adjustable uh, seat and of course a panoramic roof which goes all the way across so very well equipped for the money you really pretty much want for nothing in this car how do you feel about the drive well you know what let's take it for a drive and see what it's like Okay, so let's take it for a drive or put it into drive. Now, I've got it in normal mode, but I've got the regen on maximum. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. I've kept it in maximum the whole time. Now, let's get the whole EV thing and the range stuff out of the way first. So like I said, it's best to check that other video that I recorded uh, on the longer journey. Again, the link should be up here in the description, and uh, in which I talk extensively about it. So I'm not going to go into too much details. But what I will say is that what I found with this particular car is that on the longer drive, uh, yeah, you know, if you use the heating and if you have it in normal mode and if you uh, have it at higher speed, you will see that mileage, um, uh, the, the mileage range erode quite rapidly. However, around town, I've seen it perform much, much better. You know, I've charged it once since I got back from my long journey and it's hovered around 70. It's on 66 miles at the moment and it's sort of hovered on that depending on how I've driven it. Of course, the advantage in town is using the regen and of course, there's a green on, on the so supposed the rev counter side of the instrument panel, which is actually just showing you the efficiency level. And there are, there's a green bar up to about 60% of, of the power and that's basically efficient le efficiency level below zero it says charge so if when the needle dips below zero it's actually charging so like when i was just slowing down there i saw the needle go down so it's in recuperating or recovering some some um, charge there so i try to keep it between 20 not more than 30 percent uh in normal driving and that actually retains quite a bit of charge so in that sense it's quite good so the range anxiety part is more on a longer journey in town it's not that much of an issue uh charging it not really too difficult there's only one sign that comes up on here that tells you that it's charging and then you have to just press the the uh, the starter button twice to show you how much percentage is actually charged um, so that was the only way I could tell otherwise I couldn't tell but other than that it wasn't too much of a problem so moving on from the charge what's it like uh, on the go so it's a normal mode now and actually let's just for a moment put it into sports mode and you can see immediately the throttle response jumped it kind of leapt actually um, and you can see that the throttle response is keener but aside from that there isn't really too much difference you know uh, this is not a sports car it's not meant to be a sports car it's not meant to be driven like a sports car the strengths of this car, the real um, benefits of this car is that it is uh, an electric vehicle that is a family SUV. The ride of the car is not too bad, but it's a little bit on the firm uh, side as I'm beginning to learn that that is a bit of an electric vehicle trait. And I guess that's because the batteries live in the floor pan, floor pan as they do in this car. And that kind of stiffens the chassis and the platform. And I think some of that starts to translate through to the cabin. I'm sure that in that time, manufacturers will figure out how to get around that particular issue. Um, but it's not uncomfortable it's not unduly harsh or anything like that it's just that you feel that it's a little bit maybe stiffer than you, you might have expected all around visibility is good um, you know you're sitting pretty high the mirrors work really well there is a reversing camera I haven't really struggled at all with anything like that and um, as for the steering, it's very light, no feel, um, but you know, generally it's 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 it's, it's faithful and it's responsive. But uh, you know, it's again no way sporty, but no issue at all. Very light, you know, very easy to use. The car is about that. The car is about making your life as easy and comfortable as possible, not making things difficult. It's about you know, it, it's ideally for this sort of situation where we are now in an urban environment, northwest London, going back and forth. You know, doing. I mean, like I said, since I've been b uh, back from my longer trip and I've done a, quite a few short runs here and there and the mileage hasn't been a problem. Driving the car hasn't been a problem. Very quiet, as you can imagine, of course. Um, even on the motorway, it was very good. It was smooth. There was a little bit of wind noise, but it wasn't too bad at all. It was actually quite a refined experience. And with the adaptive cruise control, you could pretty much set it and forget it, aside from that nagging feeling in the back of your head about whether you're going to run out of range or not. But other than that, it was a very easy car to cruise in. But again, I think that when if they do have, as rumoured, a bigger battery and a bigger range, and I think that I, I'd like to try that again. I'd like to try a similar journey again in that car uh, at some point. But around town, I think, is where it really shines because I think it works really well. And again, it's one of those scenarios where, I know I said I wouldn't be talking about the EV aspect of it too much, but it's one of those scenarios I keep coming back to, and I think a lot of people are coming to the same conclusion, that if you're living in an urban environment uh, or you live in a town or a village where your trips are not that big and you have the home charging facility, 
warranty then these cars make sense because you just keep them plugged in and off you go having said that there is a big price differential to pay for a newer car um, you get a lot of spec on this car you get a lot of kit you will not be wanting for anything quite frankly um, but overall the experience is a very pleasant one it's a very uh, logical one you can make the argument for this car and it does succeed in that argument as long as you don't do a lot of highway miles or a lot of motorway miles but as a family vehicle it works really well well it's really practical comfortable uh, spacious and uh, just does everything you need it to do so there you go there's the review of the mg zs ev and i think generally it's a thumbs up depending on your circumstances and how you intend to use it <laughs> let me know what you think of the car the review anything else in the comments above below elsewhere i'd also love to get your feedback on uh, owning and living with an electric car if you have one thanks so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. And you know what? Try to leave a comment, try to share it. And of course, you're subscribing, right? To youtube.com forward slash brown car guy. And follow me on my blog as well, which is just browncarguy.com. Look me up on the socials. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even on TikTok. Just search for my hashtag, which of course is hashtag brown car guy. And you know what? If you enjoy my content, you can also sponsor it from as little as two pounds or two dollars a month, the price of buying me a coffee. You do that, right? These guys did, the guys are coming up on the screen right now. And in return for that, they get their name on even the URL or anything else they want to mention at the end of my videos, in many of my Instagram posts, and also at the end of my articles on the blog as well. And that's a fair bit of reach because on my Instagram, I have nearly 8,000 followers. On this channel, there's nearly two, well, there's over 2,000 subscribers. And I have in total uh, about 350,000 views over the space of just over a year. So a fair bit of reach. And then you can join these incredible people coming on, that are on the screen, as you see behind me, which is Muhammad Ali Humaid, uh, Parthas Univas, and find him on Parthens.com, Tom Conway Gordon here in the UK, Isaac Boshard over in America, find him on BespokeAutos.com, Reza Adel right here, uh, uh, find him on Instagram at Alizade Cigars, uh, Muhammad Qasim, you can find him on WEHM. S.com, Siraj Abasi, check out amazing floors and tiling and stuff that they do on Virtuoso Design uh, London. Mark Waddell over in Canada and um, uh, Zach Kogiani, check out his photography on Zach Kogiani Photography.com. These are awesome friends of mine, awesome buddies because they're supporting me. You can join them too, and your name could be coming up on here. Just head over to patreon.com forward slash brown car guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you all again soon in the next video.